Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. How do you measure soil health? That's a question a lot of farmers ask. And today, we're going to look at some of the assessment tools available and the type of insights those tools can provide. And uh, to help me tackle this topic, I'm joined by OMAFRA soil scientist and land resource specialist, Dan Surrett. Hi, Dan. Hey, thanks for joining me on Soil School. Thanks for having me. Dan, um, there are several uh, soil health tests available to farmers. Um, I want to dig into the, some of those specific examples in a minute. But before we get there, um, what type of information slash results in general can farmers expect uh, to receive from a soil health test? Yeah, so, I mean, soil health tests are really just some uh, uh, soil analyses that we kind of uh, wrap up uh, into the, the soil health, I guess, sphere, where we talk about um, soil, biological, chemical, and physical properties. And so those are pretty common things that we would look at um, in regular soil analyses, except some of these are more linked to the concepts of soil health. So, for example, and, and all of these things are really uh, intricately linked together. So if you think about, for example, um, uh, something like soil organic matter, which is a fairly standard test, uh, we would we would call that a, a type of biological indicator of soil health. And then you can look at physical things like aggregate stability. And then you can look at like uh, um, minor elements or nutrient cycling, right? And these things are all really linked together because we know that things like organic matter lead to better aggregation and organic matter also leads to uh, enhanced nutrient cycling. And so all of these things are just different tests that Tell us how well the soil, all the different parts of the soil are working together towards an overall soil health. Now, one of the most well-known soil health tests is, is Cornell's com, you know, comprehensive assessment of soil health. Um, tell us about this test and, and what information farmers uh, you know, receive when they do the assessment. Sure. So, so one of the underlying principles to understand about the soil health tests is that you can you can evaluate these different soil health indicators in different ways. And so, there's kind of three common ways to look at that. You can look at a soil health indicator where more is better. You can look at it in terms of uh, uh, less is better, and then you also can look at it in terms of optimal ranges. And so, to give some examples of some of those, we'll use soil organic matter because it's one of my favorites. Um, that's an indicator where more is better. So the more organic matter you have in the soil, the better it is for soil health. And so you would get, I guess, in terms of soil health, a better score if you have more organic matter. At the end, at the other end of the spectrum, you can think of the soil physical parameters. One uh, specifically, something like surface hardness, um, where, for example. Um, you know, you measure surface hardness by using a, a penetrometer, which is basically a probe with a with a gauge on it, which measures how much pressure you need to apply to get the probe to go down vertically into the soil. Um, and so you can imagine more pressure is not better. You want to apply less pressure because you don't want compacted soil. You want um, aeration in that soil and you want aggregation. Um, and then a classic example of like an optimum range would be something like soil pH. Obviously, you don't want a very acidic soil. You also don't want a very alkaline soil. You kind of want something that's in that neutral range where nutrient cycling is optimal. And so we're looking for kind of that, that middle ground. Now, what other tests are out there, um, Dan, that, that, that typically come to mind when you think soil health tests? And, and how do they differ from the Cornell assessment? Sure. Well, I think fundamentally, a lot of the tests are, are the same, uh, and, and we can we can talk about that a little bit more. But um, one of the other tests that 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 gained a lot of attention was the the Haney soil test. Now, this this the Haney soil test looks at a number of different things, um, but there are three components that make up the actual soil health score that's calculated at the end of the the the, the Haney test, and that's the uh, soil respiration. Um, water extractable organic nitrogen and water extractable organic carbon. So really these are all kind of indicators of, uh, of microbial activity um, in the soil. And then those are kind of added up together at the end to give you a final score. Um, another part of the Haney test, which doesn't necessarily factor into the overall score, is it looks at the availability of nutrients using an extraction by organic acids and sort of mimic kind of um, natural extraction of nutrients by the roots 
uh, from the soil. Um, there's also some other kind of commercially available soil health tests. One that I think a lot of people have probably heard of uh, is Solvita. So Solvita, um, uh, they have, uh, they've developed two tests. One is uh, the, the CO2 burst test, which is just, again, a soil respiration test. Um, and that one we typically just call Solvita. And then there's SLAN. And so SLAN is uh, a soluble labile amino um, nitrogen. So it's just basically an indication of nitrogen availability in the soil. So a lot of people have probably heard of, of, of that one. That's a commercial test that's available um, by, by the company called Solvita. Um, in addition to that, there, there's a lot of work that's being done right now uh, by an organization called the Soil Health Institute that's based out of the United States. So they completed in, I think, 2019, 2020, a fairly large sampling program of a number of long-term research plots across all of North America. And they're in the process right now of running a number of different soil analyses and evaluating how well those could potentially be used as soil health indicators. Um, and really the, the focus there is to, is to provide some, I guess, some advice on which soil tests should be used or could be used as soil health indicators and which ones might be stable kind of across uh, across geographies. So the, in terms of like the differences and the similarities between all of these things, um, you know, all of these tests really look at kind of uh, uh, important characteristics of the soil that we've already talked about in terms of soil health. So physical, chemical, and biological. And so they might get there using slightly different tests, slightly different procedures, but they're all looking at those same aspects of soil that are critical to soil health overall. Now, when I'm looking for soil health information, I always see references to soil health tests and soil health frameworks. You know, what's the difference between the framework and a test, and, and how do they connect then? Yeah, so I would, I would say that um, the way you want to look at it is a, a, a soil health test that would be an individual test that makes up part of a soil health framework. So for example, the, the one that people uh, uh, know about a lot is the Cornell soil health, you know, we call it the Cornell soil health test. Well, the, that, that is actually a, a, an assessment framework where you look at multiple different soil analyses that are used as soil health tests or indicators, and you wrap them all up into uh, an overall score. And so that's the framework. So you have all these different tests that contribute to your overall um, final score. So Dan, final question, you know, when you consider the tests and frameworks available to farmers, you know, here in Ontario and across Canada, how can growers best use them to effectively evaluate soil health? Yeah, you know, that it's, it's a good question. It's a difficult question to answer sometimes. Um, so what we've seen uh, from literature recently um, and from experience in, 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 in looking at soil health uh, indicators for Ontario um, is that these tests need to be calibrated regionally. So we can't just take the Cornell framework, for example, which has a number of, of scoring functions for all of these different indicators and just apply them to Ontario um, because our soils are not the same and our cropping systems are not the same. And so, um, so we have to explore um, conditions in Ontario to be able to adapt these different types of frameworks to our local conditions. And so one of the things we're doing to try to accomplish that is, is, is a program that we've called the, the Topsoil Sampling Program, where we're sampling across all of agricultural Ontario. Um, so we, we're, we're hoping to, to complete about 1,500 um, sampling locations across the province. And for each of those samples, we're, we're running a, a number of soil analyses, and, and these are the indicators that, that we, we are seeing being used uh, for soil health um, in other frameworks. And we're also testing new ones. Because uh, really what we're trying to do is get a better understanding of what soil health is um, in Ontario conditions. So when yeah. do we get a soil health test for Ontario? Yeah, that's another really good question. And so uh, our colleagues in the Ag Development Branch are actually currently working on a soil health planning tool. And so the, the planning tool is more comprehensive than just, you know, grab a soil sample, send it to the lab and get your results and here's your score. So, you know, uh, the, 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 the tool will include, um, you know, recording information about soil management, crop rotations, cover crop use, a number of different things that affect soil health. Right. And then the topsoil program, what we're trying to do is provide a baseline data set for some of these indicators. Right. So as part of this, that soil health tool, you would you would also take a soil sample and send it to the lab. 
And then um, the baseline information that we're now collecting with the topsoil program gives us a way to kind of evaluate where on that sliding scale that soil sample is in terms of, of soil health. And if you want to know more about that, uh, Sebastian and I will be presenting with some of the University of Guelph Soils at Guelph profs at the Ontario Ag Conference in January on this topsoil sampling soil health program and on what might be coming our way in terms of a soil health assessment tool for Ontario. Awesome. Well, Dan, hey, uh, we will look for you and Sebastian Belliard uh, at the conference. Um, look, to, uh, look forward to hearing more on that. And thank you for stopping by and joining us on the Soil School. Thanks. Anytime.